<clears throat> All right. Good evening, everyone. Storm Team Meteorologist Griffin Hardy here in the CBS 42 studios uh, from Birmingham, Alabama. Good evening, everyone. Hope you all are having a good Sunday evening. We are still keeping a close eye on Hurricane Marco. It's a Category 1 storm, and it is now uh, about 180 miles away from the mouth of the Mississippi River. I'll give everybody a second to tune in. Hope you all are doing well tonight. This is the satellite imagery of the storm. It's still holding steady at a Category 1 storm, and it doesn't really seem likely that this thing will intensify any further to a Category 2 or beyond that because uh, you can sort of make it out in the satellite imagery. This is a pretty lopsided storm. Um, usually you see this with weaker storms that um, a lot of the convection, a lot of that heavy rain and uh, thunderstorms, the activity is mostly in the right-hand side of the circulation. Uh, we've got a ton of heavy rain that's coming into the Florida Panhandle right now, but notice on the left-hand side of the storm, uh, not much is happening. That's, we got, that's because we've got drier air. Uh, on the left-hand side of the storm, you've got winds coming out of the north because hurricanes spin counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere. That dry air gets wrapped around the circulation, and that's, what's, uh, that's what you're seeing there almost with that dry slot between uh, those heavier thunderstorms towards the panhandle and the center of the storm. You have this dry slot forming, and that's because of the dry air coming all the way around the circulation there. So that's a little meteorology lesson for you real quick. But uh, anywho, yeah, still a Category 1 storm. Look at the radar showing all of that torrential downpours, all the torrential downpours coming in on the east side of the storm, a lot of lightning near Tallahassee, Florida. We'll continue to see these tropical rain bands spiral around the storm. We're already starting to see that towards uh, Mississippi as well with uh, just the past two hours. You see those waves of rain passing through. That's what it should look like for most of us here in South Mississippi and South Alabama. Uh, starting tomorrow and even for central Alabama. Some of those rain bands may even make it that far north. However, a lot of the impacts, the storm surge, the damaging winds, the flooding rains will be confined to mostly southeast Louisiana. That's where the hurricane watches and hurricane warnings are in effect. And that's where the center of the storm will be making its closest approach. So here's the official track for, it says Tropical Storm Marco, please forgive me, it's Hurricane Marco. That's a typo there at the top of the screen, but anywho, uh, looks like most of those impacts will again be felt mostly in South Louisiana because that's where the closest uh, approach for Marco will be. And it has it, yep, holding category one strength and then it'll continue its track westward, uh, kind of weakening down back to a tropical storm by early Tuesday morning and then a depression once it makes it to Houston, uh, eventually dissipating by Wednesday afternoon. And of course, by then, it will just be just this big blob of rain and not really be anything to worry about for places like Houston and Austin and San Antonio. But those of you who may be watching in southeast Louisiana, you guys may be seeing some pretty significant impacts in the form of storm surge and uh, freshwater flooding from the excessive rainfall that's likely. You've got the hurricane warnings still in effect for most of the communities that are down there in the bayou by uh, the mouth of the Mississippi River. Everywhere you see shaded in red there, that's where the hurricane warnings are in effect. And that extends up towards everybody who is along the Gulf Coast of Mississippi. And that's immediately along the coast where uh, hurricane conditions are possible within the next 36 hours. Farther inland, near downtown New Orleans, we've got just a hurricane watch in effect, which just means it's possible that they get some of those hurricane winds. But um, most of the impacts, again, down there in the, the swamp of South Mississippi towards the mouth of the river. Farther inland, you got tropical storm watches and mornings down I-10, going from Jennings all the way over to the Alabama state line. The Alabama Gulf Coast is just under a tropical storm watch. Looks like that strongest wind field is gonna be staying far enough away from the Alabama Gulf Coast to not really worry about uh, any big uh, significant impacts. Uh, however, the storm surge is still gonna be noteworthy, especially for places along the uh, Louisiana Gulf Coast. So. Here's the latest forecast. This is basically just a recreation of the graphic from the National Hurricane Center. Three to five feet of storm surge possible going from really Port Morgan, which is in the far southern tip of Louisiana, over towards the mouth of the Mississippi River and up towards New Orleans. Uh, while they may not get the strongest winds in New Orleans, over towards Lake Bourne and Lake Pontchartrain near 
Uh, Slidell, there's, they could certainly get, uh, you know, anywhere in the neighborhood of uh, three to five feet of storm surge, especially east of New Orleans. Uh, of course, you know, New Orleans is certainly, uh, they've dealt with bigger storms in the past, so they, you would hope that they're, they, have, they have the infrastructure to certainly prepare for significant storm surge, and I think they will be this time around. Uh, three to five feet of storm, storm surge is definitely significant, but um, it's, uh, it's, it's, worth, uh, it's worth taking seriously, and it, it could be much worse, that's for sure. Farther west, you know, one to three feet of storm surge towards uh, Franklin, Louisiana, south of Lake Charles there. They'll be, you know, farther away from the center of the storm, so it won't be as significant. And again, up towards Pascagoula, Gulfport, more on the lines of one to three feet near Pascagoula, Biloxi. Uh, they've dealt with that before. I covered Tropical Storm Gordon a couple years ago, and they had similar impacts there. Uh, towards Waveland and Gulfport, you know, more on the lines of two to four feet of a surge possible with this storm. So that's the latest with Marco. This is Laura, the storm that, uh, that well, the second storm that everybody's keeping a close eye on. Um, Laura has a better chance of becoming a stronger storm, I think, because this is going to have more time to consolidate. It's going to have more time over warmer ocean waters. And just based on the satellite imagery, it's more organized than Marco. It's also kind of, it's also bigger. I think it's covering, you know, a, a larger area than, uh, than Marco is. So this storm is probably going to be a little bit more impactful, I think. And that being said, it's likely going to be impact the same areas. Uh, the forecast track um, past 24 hours, it's been kind of all over the place with these both with both of these storms. But here's the latest track from the Hurricane Center. They have to update these constantly because we get new model data that comes in. This is the latest. So as it reaching category one strength early Wednesday morning and then category two strength, by Wednesday afternoon, making landfall somewhere near Lake Charles, Louisiana, with that official forecast track. However, the cone's still pretty wide. You know, we're still three, four days away from this thing making landfall. So this will, this forecast line that you see there in the center, that is probably subject to change uh, because we've got about, actually, I'll measure it real quick. We've got about, I would say about, you know, 350 miles of uncertainty in terms of where the storm's going to go. Real quick, I will measure that. That forecast cone still about uh, roughly about 250, 300 miles wide uh, by the time this thing makes landfall. So it could go towards Houston. It could go towards New Orleans. We just don't really know at this point just yet because models shift a lot with tropical cyclones. Um, so we'll we'll wait and see about the exact track. That of course will have to be fine tuned the next couple of days. But I think uh, more than anything that this storm has definitely the better chance of being the stronger one, uh, possibly becoming the Category 2 storm because it's got, you know, more real estate to cover, so to speak. So if you're watching us in central Alabama, the main takeaways for this is that neither of these storms will really impact us in a significant way as of yet. I think Marco stays down to the south and that as of right now, Laura should stay far enough west of us to not bring any significant impacts, but I think it's still worth watching. Anytime we're on the right-hand side of the storm, I think it's worth watching because winds are out of the south. That's where all the moisture is. That's where all the heavy rain is. And typically, you can have uh, spin-up tornadoes that develop on the right-hand side of the circulation when there's enough spin in the atmosphere. And again, I think Laura will be the stronger storm with landfall coming about 48 hours after uh, Marco makes landfall. Both of them will impact South Louisiana, and I think a pretty significant way, especially when you consider they're both back to back, uh, pretty rare that you have two storms that make landfall in the same state so close together. Obviously, you know, in the same season, that's one thing. When you have storms that could be three or four weeks apart, that wouldn't, that's not so unprecedented, but the fact that they're so close together is what's making these two storms worth talking about so much, obviously. So, uh, that's the latest. Uh, again, Marco is still a Category 1 storm. Laura will still probably be the bigger storm, um, potentially impacting the same areas. Of course, that forecast cone still has to be uh, fine-tuned a little bit. You know, uh, four days away is, uh, is forever in meteorolo meteorological terms, so we'll wait and see about Laura. But we can, say for, we can say with a good degree of confidence that Marco will probably cap itself as a, as a Category 1 storm, probably won't be too much stronger than that. 
but uh, if you're in southeast Louisiana, you might want to hunker down for the next couple days or at the very least, you know, move farther inland if you can help it. And same goes for people on the Gulf Coast of Mississippi. Uh, they're pretty close to the storm center there as well, so wouldn't be a good idea to kind of move up towards inland a little bit farther if you know you're immediately along the coast especially. So that's the latest. Uh, if anybody's got any questions, I will be sure to check the comments section and look through them and as answer, answer as many as I can. Uh, otherwise, everybody stay safe. And if you have folks that are in, the, in Louisiana or in uh, Mississippi, be sure to reach out to them and let them know or, or let them know what's going on. Talk to them, give them a heads up, whatever you got to do. Definitely be sure to do that. All right. So that's it for now. I will uh, we'll continue to provide updates as these storms keep on coming along. Uh, I think um, the next Facebook Live will probably be tomorrow morning uh, when Nate Harrington's back in the studio. He'll give you guys another Facebook Live to tune into. Otherwise, have a great rest of your night, everybody, and have a good night.